Hello, Leah. Welcome to the Confidence Diaries. Hi, I'm very excited to be here. Good. I'm very excited to have you here. So how are you? How's how's 2023 been treating you so far? I'm really good, although I'm just kind of shocked that we are now into the second month, like well into the second month. I'm like January just kind of went, whoosh, didn't it? And then I think after like the whole, dare we say it, the whole pandemic, it's like sometimes you're looking back and thinking, what did I do that year? Like there's some years kind of missing. You're like, yeah, I'm in I... 2023 and I'm like, like 2021, right? I'm like, what was that year? Like, that I was like the remember. lost year. <laughs> 2020, 2021 have just like blended into one big blur for me now. Yeah, like 2020, you go, right, that's the time we spent all that time. So in the house and everything. And then 2021, you're going, what were we doing then? Like, what did we do that year? Like, it's all so confusing. It's like we were just <laughs> waiting, where we're waiting for life to restart. Where yeah. we're the whole year. Yes. yes, we were. And you're busy, you're Start working hard. Dead. Restart it dead, Lindsay. Restart it dead. And it, you got back on stage. So you're, yeah. you've you got shows going on over the next, well, forever, basically, haven't you? Because you've always got <laughs> ideas. But you've got shows going on at the moment, your one-woman show. Yeah, so we do, what I do is I do them in, like, little bursts because, obviously, I work in television as well. So um, some people do, like, they'll go out and they'll do a massive big tour over, like, multiple dates. But it's very difficult because... Um, you know you've well I want to be I've got a hair in my mouth <laughs> see this is my like one of my biggest things having hair so, like makes me vote <laughs> it's gone oh I was very calm there I could have had a whole episode of book in there um <laughs> yeah I want to be available for filming so um filming uh, generally you you kind of read for something maybe a few months before it goes out so you know it's, it's always kind of very not last minute for us but in in the in, in the world of non-magic folk and the muggle world you know when you're trying to live a normal life it is quite short notice you know like um so I I can't book things too far in advance because I always want to try and be available for filming so I've got five. We did five shows. I keep saying we. We <laughs> me and Martin, my tour manager, and Russell, who who is a production assistant. Um, we did. Um, do you know what I did? It was so cool. I did Soho Theatre last year. Brilliant. It's like a big, big deal. Like a huge deal. Um, and we. It's. I started at the Fringe with my new show, and then I went out and did, I think four other kind of central belt, four or five central belt venues. And then in between that, I went to Soho Theatre in London and did my show there. And it was like, it was like epic. It was very, very scary. I was very, very intimidated by it because it's a bit of a big, well, a bit of a, it is a huge institution of comedy and, um, but it was amazing. And then now we're going out to do uh, some more venues because places like The Borders, like Dumfries um, and the East Coast out to um, St Andrews, and then the Glasgow Comedy Festival, which is lovely, because I've not done that before. Um, and then I'm doing the Gaiety. I've not been to the Gaiety for so long in air, and it's, like, one of my favourite venues to play. It's such an important local theatre. There's so much history, you know. Such a famous theatre, that one. Oh. Um, now, I've seen your show, Liam McRae. Yeah. Yes, and I absolutely loved it for so many reasons. To be honest, it just reminded me how much you need a good laugh in your life because yeah. you know when you oh I just felt great after just laughing properly laughing out loud and I think like we do that so much as children don't we we're you know we're always making kids laugh and it's the most yeah. amazing feeling and the most amazing thing to hear them laugh but then uh -huh. as we get older we kind of have a wee chuckle here and there but we don't have proper good laughs yeah. um, it's so good for you isn't it I, I think so and when you're saying that it's making me think of there comes a point in your life where it's a bit like come on now just like maybe teachers with people of authority do it because it's kind of what they've been told to do and you're like at what point do we lose that absolute kind of unbridled joy where you do you're just like you know you maybe run into a room and you're like <laughs> and you're like we don't do that everybody would be like what's wrong with them and you're like isn't it funny that actually that's an instinct is I think it must be instinctive if you do it when you're very small it must be the way human beings are supposed to be do you know exactly. what I mean? And then we kind of lose it all. And like laughter is like, see, for me, standing on the stage, you know, the first 10 minutes of a show 
I probably couldn't tell you anything the audience are doing because it's always terrifying the first 10 minutes. And then once you relax in and you're in the room together and you feel safe, it's like, I can't explain to you what that sound of laughter is like. And it's, it, you know, it's not to be misconstrued with kind of like ego or it's not about like me going, oh, this is like, everyone's laughing at me. It's It's more like going, it's like this room and the laughter is all happening at the same time. And you're watching people like, it's such a privilege to stand in front of people and watch them all laughing and having such a lovely time you know it's like it's, it's so like a shared cool. it's like a here, shared human experience you know it's like that joy that energy that's in the air yeah brilliant. it's magic like it's, I'm not it, it really is magic it's it's magical in a theatre especially comedy in the theatre it's like there's nothing like that that there's a there's something in the air it's all the people, it's all the all that energy sitting together, like it's a lot of power there. I Definitely. Think. And obviously, like I'm sure early in your career this this maybe wasn't the case, but but all those people have booked tickets to see you, you know, they know what they're going to. Um and so that in itself, even though it's probably still a bit scary, does that give you a little bit more confidence getting on the stage? Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's worse he's so much pressure it's so much pressure like I remember like I used to do um this big show 51 Shades of Maggie and um Robert the producer Robert Kelly's a great producer he does a lot of a uh, theatre production in the UK and he said to me when it, one day I was driving over I think I was playing the pavilion. Or like, like it was like it sold out and sold out. It's a huge theater. Like every night it was sold out. And he said to me, like, um, it must be amazing getting in your car in your hometown and driving to your work, knowing that there's like, like seventeen hundred people, pay, waiting to see you in a the theater. And I was like, that's not. It's it's not. It's so it's pure pressure. But it's amazing when you get through. You know, towards the end, of course, it's an amazing feeling. But it is you you feel pressure because you don't there's no it, it is like any other job you don't you know that you can do your job you know what you're going to do you know that you'll do it but there's pressure in doing it well you've got to do your job well every single time you do your job you've got to do it to the top level you don't want to be making mistakes you don't you know it's like that kind of thing that's more heightened I think on stage like you don't want to let people down especially now I feel more pressure the more people are struggling struggling with money financially, generally, I feel more pressure because I know how important it is, like the, the money they've spent. So I feel real pressure to make sure that they have the best time and that they think they've they've got something, you know, of value for the money they've spent. And that's quite hard. I know like you in the show there's, you know, a thread about your sort of your anxiety anxiety challenges um and like you're saying you do put pressure on yourself as well and um, because yeah. because you want to do such a good job but showing up like you know every single time hitting the the mark with every performance based on you know when there's lots of different things going on in your in your personal life your home life you know that's not an easy thing to do yeah it's, I, I mean I suppose it's part of your training is to to drop all your personal stuff at the door or the wing well they say the wing of the stage but I mean you need to drop it you need to not take it into the venue with you at all I think <laughs> especially if you're doing a one woman show it's very difficult because you know art can imitate life to, it, no matter what you're if you're filming or you're on stage there can be things going on in your life that run similarly to stories that you're telling you know the, the character that you play so that can always be really difficult um and Sometimes it can just be really difficult if you are having a hard time, if there's stuff going on as things go on in everyone's life. There's no hiding when you're a performer. Like, you know, sometimes, because I've done other jobs as well, so I'm not, you know, I'm speaking from experience when I say, like, there's times I've gone into like maybe another job and been able to almost hide for maybe 10 minutes or go to the loo or do, just do something to, if you feel a little bit wobbly or you feel a bit emotional or whatever's going on, and you need to take a call or you can kind of, get somewhere quickly and whereas when you're when you're on stage you know you can't do that but that said you're on the stage for you know two hours so that's why I think it's probably more manageable because when you're up and running 
it's different on a television set, but again, on a television set, you can get little moments where you break away. So stage is the most exposing, I think, for sure, the most exposing environment, and you've got to really pull yourself together. But it, like we were chatting about that, um, me and a, a acting friend of mine, we were talking about adrenaline and how bad adrenaline actually is for you, especially for performers, because of the way we work. So you might be booked on a big stage job, right? So you've got adrenaline every night, every single night, high, high adrenaline. Like, I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to let people, if you imagine like what, what people feel like, quite often people say to me, they're nervous about doing maybe a speech at a wedding or they have to stand up in front of a room of people or go for a job interview. If you imagine that feeling you get right before you've got to do the thing, that's what you get really as an actor every time before you go on stage. But obviously we've got a lot of training to harness it and to calm because you couldn't, you wouldn't be able to go on and do what you do, but it it then makes, it can dip. So, you know, you you come off stage and maybe a bit an hour later, the adrenaline starts to dip down. And then, then obviously actors go for long periods without work. <laughs> so then you you find yourself, your adrenaline's gone from one extreme to the other because you might feel a little bit unmotivated and a little bit, you know, deflated and these things. And so, it's just not, it's not, I don't think it's very good for you, my job. I don't think it's good for your health. It's a roller coaster for your mental health, isn't it, as well? Because, yeah. like you say, a lot of your identity is tied up in the job that you get, the, you know, how well you perform and and all the assumptions that people make about you, because people think, oh, look, she's on the stage or look, she's on the TV, which she, she must be super confident. She must you know, like glide through life and like- I think you're really rich that. as well. Oh, everybody <laughs> thinks you're really rich and you're like, guys, I'm not. <laughs> I work like that. <laughs> I work in Scotland, I'm not, I'm not rich. <laughs> so in terms of the show as well though, it's quite an open, honest show about some of the things that you've um, struggled with in terms of like negative thoughts and almost yeah. like putting yourself down a bit. Is, is that something yeah. that's kind of shown up quite a lot in your life then? I think I, I worry a lot. And there's a, there's a thing in the show where I talk about, um, I don't want to give loads away, but, but there's a bit where I talk about people saying to me for a long time, up until... In fact, people probably still say to me, you're just a wee warrior. You're a wee warrior. That's what you are. And you're like, it's 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 difficult because I can understand why people say that and why people might think it. And I know that worrying is a trait, is a character trait, but somebody if if you know somebody that worries a lot, like a lot, then that that's not they're not a warrior. They're somebody who struggles with maybe anxiety or another condition that makes them very sensitive to their surroundings or, you know, they, they maybe feel overwhelmed by things quite easily. There are so many hidden mental health problems that people have that are so common but so taboo, you yeah. know, like not discussed. I, I was speaking to an amazing actress recently who people will probably know she's been quite open about her struggle, but I said, she's, you know, she feels really bad. She's had a really bad time. She's told people about this, like, quite publicly with her mental health. And I said to her, you know, she's like, I need to get back, I need to get back. And I was like, see, every time you feel like that, I think you should look down at your leg and imagine, like, the bone is sticking out your leg. Because you would never, you would never be saying to yourself, you need to go back, you need to go back. And nobody else would be saying it. Nobody yeah. else would be looking and going, you better you sort yourself out, get back out yeah, there. Like, what? Yeah. If you had a physical broken part of your body, everybody would sympathise a bit more with it, I think. And I think with mental health, it's kind of, especially in the west of Scotland, you know, we're quite tribe, dead robust and, you know, very strong, whatever that is, you know. And it's like, we, we need to be careful we're not dismissing something that's really important and happens to so many people, you know, I think. Yeah, because saying, you know, you're, oh, you're a wee warrior that kind of underplays it. Actually, it's something that's really impacting your life. Therefore, it needs a bit yeah. more attention. And you start to then, in the show I talk about this, you start to then push your worries down and don't tell people because they, you think people think you're being, especially because because of my job and because of my nature, I'm very confident and dramatic and outgoing. So people think you're just being dramatic sometimes and you're like, no, this is actually, re I'm really struggling with this, this feeling of like this feeling of irrational worry that's when you know it's anxiety where 
or it's rational, but you've you've taken it beyond rationale. It's like it can make sense why it's happening, but your your the intensity of it is not right, and that's when you know that. And uh, do you know what though, Lindsay? See the amount of people who I was so shocked, but I wanted to cover this topic. I've always wanted to cover it or talk about it, but it's very difficult to talk about. And then it becomes a thing. If you talk about it in an interview, then the whole interview becomes about that one thing. So I thought if I did, did it in my show, you can talk about it in a kind of controlled way and get across the points that you want to get across. And I knew it was important and I knew I knew people would feel good with me talking about it, but I did not anticipate the amount of people who were so overwhelmed that like you do a meet and greet at the end of the show, like overwhelmed. I mean, like really like making me emotional because they were so emotional and like they couldn't believe that I had this. They were like, I can't believe that you have this anxiety that I have. Like some people can't leave the house and they couldn't, they just couldn't believe it. And they were like, you know, they, they were really glad that I'd shared it. And then they were sharing their experiences. And then now people know a little bit about it, right? So they come to the show, they, they're anxious people. And some people haven't been out for maybe a week and they'll come to the show and it's like such a big deal for them. Yeah, but it's Isn't amazing. It's amazing, really? like... You've tapped into you tapped into something that people relate to so much, and I think, like you say, when you see you on stage or on TV, and some of the roles you've had, especially, it's like all like the energy, the you know the, the <coughs> bubbly like personality yeah. that a lot of your roles have had, and it doesn't equate. They wouldn't, they don't no. think that that's that the same person could struggle, and it's just you know anyone can. And the thing is, when we learn to push our worries down as well, and this is something that I work on with quite a lot of my clients, we we learn unhelpful ways of dealing with those thoughts yeah. when they when they try yeah. they threaten to bubble up, and we try and push them back yeah. down again by drinking alcohol, eating food. That's know, what I was going to say, and it brings with it other problems, <laughs> other other actually like emotional and mental problems from suppressing your initial, you know, problem that you've got. It's so true. Exactly. So many people struggle with it as well. I was really, I'm really amazed by it, but I'm not really at the same time in the modern world with the way we live. And I mean, this is going into a whole, you know, philosophical thing, but it's like, we, you know, we do, we're not designed to really live the way that we live. We've got so many wants and needs and goals and, you know, it's good to have goals, but sometimes it's like we're comparing, we're doing a lot of things that are just not, not good for us, you know, and we've not got a lot of gratitude. Many of us don't. I don't have enough gratitude. I know that sometimes I, sometimes I find it very difficult to sit and look at what I've got, what I've achieved, you know. And everybody should do that in their life. Like, you know, where wherever you work, whatever you do, whatever whatever your job is. If your job's a mum, if you're, you know, what I mean, whatever your job is, it's like, look at what you've done, look at what you're doing, you know. But we find it very difficult. I think. I know and look at what we even achieve every day you know like for a lot of people like we fit a lot in you know yeah, and yeah. even if we don't feel like we do um you know for some people like getting up and having a shower is a a, like, a win it's a tick in the box because it's something that they might struggle with for some people fitting in yeah. like six meetings in a day might be a win because that's yeah. you know what they do but it's like we do far too much comparing and we and we forget to stop and just think about what we need as well um and yeah. I think so for you what are the things that kind of help you manage um you know your sort of emotional and mental ups and downs um it's really sometimes it's really difficult because I find that because you're um what a lot of people don't realize about uh, many actors is that you're, you've also got to be a business person so see at the moment I am literally producing all of my shows so I'm doing like the work of an office like I'm dealing with poster and flyer designs I'm negotiating um splits with venue I'm I'm dealing I'm making sure I've got my um production manager booked you know you're doing all these things and you're writing the show and having it edited and doing all these things so sometimes I feel like if I'm not continually being proactive even though I've done like at the moment, like see for example today, I'm like right, today is a good day. You can take a bit of a break today because you've you've done all. You've got everything set up that you need to do. But it's like I will I will punish myself emotionally if I don't 
do X amount of work, you know, like how like you've been in you, all these stupid thoughts, you know, you've been really lazy and what are you doing? Like there's people out there doing, you know, you'll look out and you'll see people at their work or just, you know, like someone will come to the door with a delivery and you go, look at that guy, he's been, or that woman, like there's a girl that comes and deliver. Look, 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 what, look what they've been doing all day. And you're like, and then you start punishing yourself and you're like, it's, where does it come from? It's mad, yeah, isn't it? It's like... you know, I need to try and, f- I, the best thing I can do is sometimes is to take a little bit of a break and it's probably only maybe a few hours out of the day, but if I can, because I do work at weekends and stuff as well, but I need to learn not to punish myself when I know that my head needs to rest. Because this is it, because the amount that you can do will probably be better and more productive if when you do take that rest. It's so true. You need to reset yourself. I like to, um, when I can, like spend time with friends and things, but I, it's be, I, I've really not seen my friends for a while. I've seen them dotted about, but... Just because when you're working on a project that's like like these shows, it's it's a big project and it takes up all of your time and it's like it's really important. You need to make sure you spend time with your friends and your family and people that are safe and kind and especially as an actor, you need to be around people that you can completely trust <laughs> because it's not in the best industry for because you know you're surrounded by actors, you're surrounded by people who, and I don't mean that they're doing anything malicious. I just mean that. You, you know, people are not always their complete one hundred percent sales because we can't be because of the and also we're... they've kind of got their own agendas. You know what I mean? They've got their own like yeah, visions, etc. Oh yeah, oh yeah, babe. <laughs> so you need to like, but I've always been like that. Like I'm very, um, I love my industry. I love going to the, I love going to events and things. But I wouldn't say I'm a like you know show busy person in very commas. Like I'm not. I, I love to be around my 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 muggles as I call them. <laughs> I don't mean that in an offensive way. It's just what I say. The muggles who are like n- like normal everyday people. The best people, yeah. Exactly. They're, they're in a, a more um. I don't know. They're not in a, such a crazy world as I'm in. So it, it brings you right back down to the reality of the world. You know. No, I do know what you mean. <laughs> it's, the ones, it's like, yeah, they're the ones that influence your life more out of, it, out of any, anyone. Oh, um, yeah, it's so important. Like, you can't, I couldn't do my job without the people that I've got. Like, there's a there's a like, wee handful of diamonds, you know, that you that you need with you. And you, you, could, do, you could do your job because you should always say that, you know, I can do this. I can do it on my own. I, ca- I can do it, but you would not be able to do it to your, the best of your ability without the people supporting you. There's no way, you know, no way. Especially my mum and dad, my God. <laughs> they must have been through some, like, ups and downs and, you know, but they must be so <laughs> proud when they sit, in, you know, in the audience and just think. Yeah. Like... My mum, like, my mum especially loves seeing me on stage. Like, she's always loved seeing me on stage, so... She she appreciates television, but she I don't think she gets the same pride. My dad is just proud of everything. So my dad, I can't tell, you know, because I tried to explain him that the actors tape and audition for a lot. Like so, you're doing once every week or so, you're doing tapes, you know, and auditioning. And if I let slip by accident that I've done a tape, that's it. Like it's not worth. It. Did you hear any news, Night Dog? Did you hear any news about that? Like, cause he's so excited, it's so lovely, but I can't tell him because it just puts the pressure on, you know. Cause you can wait for weeks and weeks. I did that that lovely big Sky comedy job, and you wait you wait for a long time now to find out if you've got a role. Have you yeah. forgotten about it? And then you're like, oh yeah. Ah, uh, <laughs> you've not forgotten about it. <laughs> you're like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know that feeling when you do go for a job interview or you're waiting but actors do it a lot and you wait a lot you're you're kind of waiting and and sometimes in my world that's what makes my world so amazing is that you're waiting for something that could be potentially a life-changing or a, a career you know a pivotal moment in your career like it could be a job that makes everything just shift a bit and so it, it can be really that that that's probably why many of us do have a bit of anxiety because you don't have a lot of control. You're at you're always at the mercy of other people's decisions a lot of the time. And even when you go, I thought I'll do my own shows and that'll give me a little bit of, you know, control. And you, of course, I've got creative control, but you still need to a venue to want you. You still need people to want to buy tickets. Like, so it's always going to be the case that you've got to be, you know, rely on other people 
yeah. wanting to see you or wanting to work with you, you know. There is a high level of uncertainty and I think you must yeah. have over the years had to learn to deal with it, like learn to dance on a shifting carpet or whatever it is, you know, when, when the opportunities yeah. come up, you go with them, but yeah. there's rejection involved as well, of course. Yeah, the rejection's um, much easier. I don't struggle, funnily enough, I really genuinely, hand in my heart, don't struggle with re rejection unless... <laughs> The only time I struggle with re rejection is if you then see the role being played and it and it you don't you you don't kind of you're like I would have done it better. <laughs> you well, you kind of go not even just you. You go maybe there was ten people that you know were up for it and and you go oh but that's a real rarity. I've got to see in anything that I've that I've read for that I've seen other people playing. I'm I don't I'm very lucky. I don't struggle with it because I'm always like, yeah, they're great, you know. You you feel better when the person's brilliant. And also you can let it go because it's the the world of television and theatre is so like multi-layered and, and there's so many choices made for different reasons and you can never know, you know, and they're 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 piecing a jigsaw together, they've got a casting brief and they've got to meet that brief and so you know that you're such a small cog and it's all got to fit together so but it's very very difficult if you like I read for a part recently that I'm still waiting to hear about and I would it's like there every, every so often there comes a job where you go oh I really want to do this job like I really want to do this and I really would love to do this job I'll need to tell you if I get it but it's really tough and Rosie was like that when I when I auditioned for Rosie Malloy and I got the role of Monica it's such an amazing feeling when you get offered the part when you really, really want it and you the scripts are brilliant and you know that you know some of the cast and you know the who the director is and you can you just imagine this job and you're like, Oh god, it would be so good, you know. Do you know what I do though? When I get like a new job or a new even a new client sometimes, you get that buzz where you're like, Oh my god, yes, 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 yes. And then I think, Holy crap, I hope I can actually like do it. You know what That's I mean? That's what I find. So from a performer's point of view, what happens is especially to a commercial level. So you get the job right and you're totally buzzing. And then like when I did 51 Shades of Maggie, like my face was everywhere. Like all of a sudden you're like, you're everybody goes, can I do this job? Right. Imagine you like you, you think, can I do this job? And you're interviewing about it. You've got pictures of you everywhere. Like you're like, oh my God, what if, I, what if I'm really crap? And everything's like... That's tough. That is pressure. Tough. There is a lot of pressure, but you just got to have... um, You've really got to have self-belief genuinely. You've got to believe. Like I never have any doubt in my ability to do my job. And that's not... And I don't apologise for it. And I always tell people you should never be apologetic you should never worry about people in my diary show. I used to have this thing where I talked about people saying, she's pure folly herself. Can I go hard? She's folly herself. Because you're not allowed to say that you're good at something if it's a thing that people deem to be a talent, you know? Like yeah. I says to my mum, like, I says, you can, she can do the shorthand typing. I was like, you'd never, if someone said, can you type really well? You wouldn't go, eh, eh, you'd go, yeah, I can. Like, that's okay to say that. But when it becomes a performance thing, you're not allowed to say, yes, I'm a really good singer. Yes, I'm a great actor. Like, you know, that way it becomes a thing that it sounds as if you're showing off, but you need to, you need to believe in yourself because you're a product. You are actually a product that you're selling. And then over time, you like you get more evidence to support the fact that you can do it because you've done it time and time yeah. before. And then so it's like, <laughs> it can happen with our self-belief where we start to look for the evidence that we can't do it but if we look for the evidence that we can do it then usually we can find it and it helps yep. move forward you've got to believe in yourself it's very difficult though because nerves are such a huge part and obviously nerves and anxiety then become one thing but um it's very very difficult not to be nervous about projects that are coming up but what you've got to do is just kind of accept expect them and accept them and know that's part of your process and that they will that they will drop a bit you know yeah definitely and I think that's part of what your show is about it's about you get that feeling of celebrate yourself you know whether it's like however you look you know whatever you do however you speak whatever yeah. life you live like just be you yeah. and like own it and celebrate it and is that that's like a really strong message for you isn't it yeah I just feel at the moment well for the last x amount of years I just really feel concerned about um 
why people feel things about themselves and who they listen to and why they listen to the people and what what validation they have like you know I don't like to I don't like to it's a big broad stroke to say oh influencers but there are some dangers on social media that that young people are looking at things that are not reality so they're looking at short photo shoots they're looking at like little videos and then these like especially young girls I've seen you see young girls now and they're trying to mimic a certain look but you're like that look is not sustainable even for the person you saw with that look it's not sustainable to go to school all day and look like that like I was speaking to my niece and I was like you're trying to do something that's unachievable even for the person who yep. set that kind of image to you the girl you in the picture doesn't look like doesn't even look like the yeah. girl I was like if that person was to go to school all day and do PE and do all the things you're doing and walk about in the Dreek Glesga sunlight. So I was trying to tell her about lighting. It's like, you know, you're walking about in a cloudy day in Glasgow. It's not going to look like that. It's never going to look like that. Like, And there's things like that, that that do worry me a bit with young people because they're trying to achieve this perfection. A lot of people at the moment, they're trying to make the, what they deem as a perfect image. And it just worries me that young people generally are trying to trying to look a certain way that's it's really like I don't know how to explain it, like really kind of airbrushed and glossy and like the not the way people like if you look at us just now, we've both got little like look little bits of our hair yeah, and little like, strands and lines. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like you can't achieve that normally. You need people to come and especially when I work in you know media I'm like I see what you know you've got you've got things that people that come with little wands and spray especially if you're blonde and take these little bits of hair down so that they're not all sticking up and you know the amount of powder you get and hours I know and I just it worries me because I just think what must that do then to their confidence because they don't understand that and then they think they can't achieve that look and so they think that they're not it's they're not confident if they don't wear certain things that they want to put on like a lot of young women just now not confident going out without makeup on and or and putting, like that. putting filters on all their pictures like not putting a picture anywhere unless it's got a filter on it this is confusing to me a lot of people putting these filters on with the words like over like it's like cute or something it's got like words all over their face and I'm like a lot of these filters are starting to cover bits of faces and I'm like, why? What, what is that about? It just really worries me that it's not that people want to look their best. That's not what I mean. I, I mean that people are trying to achieve something that, that is not attainable and it's yeah. not even attainable for the person that's setting the image out, you know? It's like, and do you know what? This girl, Liberty, is it Pool, her second name? She was on Love Island, this girl. And she's she's probably what I would say an influencer. Now, I don't know what she says her job title is, but I would imagine that's what her job title is, right? And um, she is really bonny girl, and she is always pictured in kind of really heavy makeup and looking fabulous out of these things. And recently she posted a picture of herself with like a two-piece on, like an underwear piece, standing up looking, and then she posted a picture of her sitting down without all the lights on. And I was like, oh my God, thank God she's done this. And she was going, some days I look like this and some days I look like this. And I was like, my mind was blown because I just thought it was so brave of her to do that because obviously she, she, that's how they make a lot of money, you know, looking fantastic as she does. But then this other, this other view of her looking the most, normal and human and I just thought oh god I hope all these these young people see this and see that she you know she was kind of sitting down and she was pulling at like parts of her and showing that she'd little bit of on her tummy or whatever you know and I was just like oh god that's so important and I just think even if they could do a bit more of that where you see the the kind of glossy side but then you see their their everyday side as well exactly and do you know interestingly I think it actually comes down to confidence on their part because once they've been presented a certain way yeah. like you say it takes a lot of courage to actually show something different of, of yourself yeah. and sometimes I think genuinely they're not confident enough to do that but I can actually really, really understand that as well because they've not been seen and they've been seen a certain way for so long um, but I think on social as well it's so important that we follow people that look like us so we don't just follow people that look like insta models or whatever because then that's a it's not representative of life anyway um but b 
that's what we kind of measure ourselves against then whereas we just want to go a whole like and celebrate you know all ways to look I just worry about like where it goes to you know because you're looking at like young young people having like you know aesthetic doing aesthetic things to their face and you know having treatment like that and I feel as if because the reason is that they want to look like somebody else like another person that they've seen and that's what gets me it's like if you want to do it because it's for you but you're like is it really for you because you I just don't I just struggle with it a little bit it's a really tough one it is a really tough one here like what brings you the most contentment and peace in your life when when do you feel those things most uh, I, I I definitely think that sadly I need to be work has to be going well for me if work is not going well because of the things we discussed before because of the lack of control and the unknown it can make me very anxious it yeah. can make me feel very concerned and that's not always work related it's life related it's financially it's you know everything that comes with that but if everything's going well with work then I just find that downtime is my favourite. You know, I love um, I love sitting with, like, I like sitting in now with my friends. Um, maybe it's because I don't go out. I don't go out in town a lot more at the weekends and things anymore. Maybe it's because I'm getting older. But sometimes I feel like I'm working if I'm out, you know, if people, you know, if people know the show you're in or something and they come up and you feel as if you've got to be at an, an elevated level all the time, you, you know. Because- on. Yeah, because I mean, and, and so you should, because these people support your work. So when they come over, you, you give them their, your time and you're so grateful to them. I like being in and um, I love drinking champagne. It's my favourite thing. Oh, lovely. In moderation, obviously. Oh, but um, I love a lovely glass of champs and um, I like spending time with my family. I like having food like with my mum and dad and my sister, my husband. Just like, I just like, like the most basic things I think that actually are most important to most people yeah yeah and what have you learned just to round off then what have you learned about confidence and how to get more of it I think you have to I think you have to be try and be kind to yourself I think you need to treat yourself as you would treat a friend if a friend came to you and need and told you half the things that you were thinking about yourself, what would you say to them? How how, how shocked would you be at some of the things they felt about themselves and how much you would disagree with it? And how frustrated you would be if they couldn't see what you were trying to make them see? And I think if you're kind to yourself and you need to have kindness and empathy for other people, I, I just think if everyone was a bit more kind... I think we would I think we would all do better I genuinely believe that kindness goes a long way it creates empathy it creates understanding and it's just it it just makes people feel a little bit more comfortable and that's that's what I think I think people should just be a bit kinder and then that would make you feel confident because you'd feel content and you wouldn't feel as if if you made a mistake or you did something foolish that people would laugh at you and that's part of the problem at the moment I think people are worried about what other people think and because people can be so mean and so then you're trying to prevent that from happening and I think killing killing insults with kindness is a good thing as well like shrugging it off it it doesn't matter like these people don't matter to you you know Andy that's unkind and and what does it say about them it says more about them than anyone doesn't it really nobody that's unkind is a happy human being I don't think exactly exactly here here and you know I have honestly just loved what you do for years since you came to my event years ago and you were like, you just, it was so good. And I especially love this sort of the messaging that you're giving out, which is, you know, the celebration of who we are, accepting, you know, the challenges that we might have, accepting that, you know, the ups and downs we'll face in life. But also I think you're on a mission to just like make people smile and laugh at a time when we all need it so much um yeah. and I just think you know good on you keep going you're doing an amazing job um where can people buy tickets to your shows because everyone needs to come to your shows yay thank you so much Lindsay that's so nice honestly it means a lot to me um my shows are on 
So I open in Perth on the 4th of March, the 10th of March is at Air Gaiety, and then we've got Glasgow Comedy Festival the 23rd of March, 8th of March we've got The Buyer, St Andrews, and then 28th of, 8th of April, sorry, and the 28th of April we've got Dumfries down at the Borders, and you can get tickets at www.liamacrae.com. Apparently you don't need to say the www anymore. Well, I only just learned that myself. I thought, why is nobody doing that anymore? People keep but... laughing at me. I go on the radio and I go, www. And they're like, yeah, you don't need to say that. <laughs> just to be thorough. <laughs> We're old school, that's why. I yeah, still we are. It. I still talk about taping something on the TV and my friends, my friends <laughs> can't say taping. It's recording. <laughs> I say that. <laughs> but thank you so much, Leah. It has been a thank joy. And, and uh, all the best. I will speak to you soon. See you later. Thank you so much. Thank you.